So at least that's step one to get to a place where this is just normalized. And so that's how I feel about the whole thing in general. But I think when I launched Live Tinted, it was so important. You know, we launched in 2017 as a community first. Um, and while we were doing that, we just used the community, not use the community, we listened to the community to help us think through what was the first beauty product we were gonna create. And it was truly made by them for them. And it just is so crazy, Jay, that what they asked for when we asked what your, what your biggest beauty concern is, was dark circles. So it was such a full circle moment yeah, for me yeah, to go back crazy. to my yeah. red lipstick video and it all happened. It was like, we have, there's clearly still a need in the market for this product. And, but again, for me, the, the product is so secondary to what we're doing, you know, like with the campaign that we launched three weeks ago, which is so crazy um, how all this is happening. But um, it was about no Photoshop. That's not something you see in the beauty industry. You know, like when people look at Instagram and they look in magazines, I don't want people to feel the way I did growing up where I felt not good enough the way I was. I mean, I definitely went through the whole thing where I starved myself and changed things about myself to look like that. And so my whole goal with Live Tinted is to just let people be themselves mm -hmm. and make that a place that's like celebrated, you know? Yeah. And I think the biggest thing we say about Live Tinted is that we're a multicultural community because if I were to just make this a brown girl brand, like everyone was expecting me to do, how is that really creating progress in the space, right? Like to, for us to really be integrated into the larger world and make this a truly inclusive brand, we have to be speaking to every ethnicity. Totally. We have to be talking to each other. And I think the biggest thing I spent the past year before we launched this product for Live Tinted was educating people on different cultures, different backgrounds, because I feel like the more you learn about other people's cultures, the more you're able to, I guess, like understand each other. You know, like when I think about, um, for example, we talked about like facial hair, which is something a lot of women have. <laughs> I hope someone out there can relate with me and it's not just me. <laughs> um, but I, when we spoke about it, all these women from all different backgrounds felt like they, they were chiming in, a Latina woman would chime in, Middle Eastern and all these things. And I was like, wow, this community is so much bigger than I even expected it to be. And it all organically happened, which is the most beautiful thing, right? Like, I think when people try to force something, you feel it, other people feel it, and it just naturally happens. I mean, I just think that's the best way to do everything in business and in life. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And I'm so glad that you've built something community first. And I remember one of my mentors in business would always say, like, build community first, commerce second. Like, always. Oh, yeah. And and he used to say it, and I was like, oh, that sounds good. Like, that sounds cool. Yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, that's one of those statements. But it was like... It's so true it is. because not only is a community, not, that's not just smart or strategic. Actually, what it is, is it's real. Because when you deeply get to know people's stories, mm -hmm. your heart expands, your vision expands, right? Like you don't become someone who's just trying to sell something anymore yes. because you have a community. For, see, if you start with commerce, you're basically thinking, are we hitting our numbers? Are we selling stuff? Mm -hmm. Is stuff being shipped, right? That's what you're thinking about. Yep. When you start with community first, like you have, you start hearing people's stories. You start hearing people's backgrounds. You hear about people's challenges. And then your brand becomes full of compassion and empathy and love and care, as opposed to being about numbers and stats and analytics. Even when you say that, it makes my like heart just like feel so good because like I, I had so many tough times this past year. I was so, it was so many lows of thinking and again, doubting yourself. Like it's, it's, it was a complete shift, right? Like I went, and for me, I never like dreamt of being a beauty influencer, but I always dreamt of this beauty brand happening. So the pressure was like 10 X <laughs> and I felt like, oh my God, like this is what I wanted since I was 16. It's happening and you have to do it right. But I had to get out of my own head and go back to the same scrappy mentality I had when I first started that YouTube video using my iPhone is you just have to start. Mm -hmm. You just have to start. And I'll tell you, like during those low times, it was literally this community that got me through it because I would read their comments and they'd be like, keep going. Thank you so much. You're changing my life. You're making me feel beautiful with who I am. And when you see those comments, like literally when you're working at one in the morning and you're like sitting there on your laptop and it's a Saturday night, that is the energy you need to say, this is why you're doing something. And mm -hmm. I think that that purpose driven aspect of a be not just a beauty, but just building a business is the it equals longevity. 100%. Because there's an emo we're human. There's a, there's a real emotion that goes into it and I think like at least for me personally and I don't know, this could be one of my weaknesses as a CEO, but I feel like I have empathy in building this business and it sometimes is like not a good thing, but it's who I am. 
and I, I don't know if that'll go away, but I, I can't help but care. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's tough, right? Because when you're a beauty personality, I'm allowed to just be that girl. But when you're running a business, you sometimes have to like shift that hat and be like, okay, like, let's think about this. Like what's going to be right for them and, and this and that. It's, it's a weird balance of all of these mm. things. Yeah. I'm, this is a therapy session all of a sudden, <laughs> but I'm into it. I'm like, man, it's a lot. Yeah, no, it is a lot. And, yeah. and that's what I think. It's so beautiful when, when, when I'm doing the podcast and I'm speaking to someone like yourself, it's like, you've just had so many transitions in yeah. life and transitions are the hardest. Yeah. And that's why most people never have them. And that's why most people live the same day over and over and over again and call it a life because transitions are so hard. Yeah. Tell me about the doubts that came in your mind and how you overcame them before you got to building Live Tinted. Like, what were the doubts? What were the challenges and what got you through? So we already know the community got you through. 100%. And I love that because that to me is, to me, that's a successful entrepreneur. Like that to me, that's a successful business person. It's someone who's living for their community and their why is so strong. But what else? What were the doubts that came up and how were you able to strategically or internally start overcoming them? I think I had to tell myself, you have to sometimes give up the good to get for, to the great. Mm. You know, like the, I actually like remember writing that out and like writing out like things were just going in sort of like a, a hamster wheel as an influencer, right? Like there was deals coming in and, and beyond the deals again, like I felt like there was everything I wanted to achieve out of being a beauty influencer, you know, that had happened, but it's comfortable. I had like a routine with it. I was, you know, in a flow of it and I was growing on like my business with it and all these things. And it, it, it's, it's really scary to go from that to, well, like I've had this dream, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I would say for me, my biggest thing was that I knew that to build a company, I would need people. And so me taking this calculated risk also impacted other people's lives. That's a really scary thing. And I think for me, it was like, again, the same way when I was working at that company and I, while working there, I started my YouTube channel, right? So while I was an influencer, I started Live Tinted. And that was the only, that's the way that I've always built my career is like, do a little test. It's almost like, you know, like just test it out, see how it goes. And that's how we launched Live Tinted as like with the hashtag, I literally just put on my, Instagram story. This is how scrappy I did it. I thought I was going to do this whole plan and like make this beautiful grid on Instagram. Right. And then I was just like, you know what, Deepika, I just put hashtag live tinted and said, if you can find a deep skin melanin, South Asian woman tag, hashtag live tinted. And within minutes, 200 people had tagged women all over online because I couldn't find a woman that looked like that on the internet. How crazy is Whoa, that? Whoa, no way. Isn't that wow, insane? That's crazy. So I just asked the community to do it. And that's, and then I was like, you know what? let's just launch this page. Mm -hmm. So that was my way of testing it out because instead of just trying to think of like, and I think that's the biggest thing we all get into our heads is this perfection idea. Mm. And when the second I stopped thinking about that or caring about it, we just launched the page and it just started to organically grow. So instead of like placing that big order for that beauty product and right away saying, I needed to start this beauty product, I started an Instagram page. Yeah. And I just started a hashtag and, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people have been using the hashtag as a way to identify themselves and tell their personal story about their identity and their culture and where they come from. And that to me helped me shape what product and what I wanted to launch from a business side. Yeah. But in the beginning, it was just about trying something out. Yeah. And I think that's the only way to do for me personally, it's not the only way to do yeah, it, yeah, yeah. but I think it's the way that you kind of go into it with a little less fear yeah. because it's scary. Mm. It's, it's still scary yeah, every no, day. That, I love that because I, I always say that all of my content is 75% complete. Oh, it's wow. just everything. This podcast, everything on Instagram, every video I've ever made is 75% complete. And that's crazy because I bet everyone watching is thinking it's 150% complete. And it's really not. From yeah. my perspective, yeah. I know everything I could have made better about each one. Yeah. But if I tried to get to 100, you'd never have, you wouldn't know who I am. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's the, that's the block we all live in. We try and go from 75, now it shouldn't be 50, right? You don't want to put something out at just 50 or 40, yeah. but you want to get to a place where you are removing that fear. Because if I waited till I got to 99 or 100, yeah. I'd never release anything. 
-hmm. because then you can just keep tweaking and keep tweaking and keep tweaking and then you don't learn and then you don't learn fast. Like waiting for something to get a hundred, you could wait 10 years to launch something. At 75, you can launch 10 things in 10 years and learn from it and get better. That doesn't mean you're giving low quality, like just to throw that out. It's not that, that's not about low quality, right? It's not about bad quality. It's not like, I don't think what I'm putting out is good quality. 